Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Google Assistant plugin for Home Assistant. And uh, what this plugin does is it allows us to directly connect uh, Google Assistant to our Home Assistant instance. Now, we've done this in the past uh, using IFTTT to, uh, to kind of capture the Google Assistant calls and direct them to our Home Assistant via URL. This is a little different than that. This is a little more exciting actually. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to expose our Home Assistant as a endpoint for, for Google Assistant directly uh, via the Google Actions uh, Cloud API. And what that's going to allow us to do is dynamically add and remove hardware and automations in Home Assistant and have that updated in uh, the Google Home app uh, seamlessly without any sort of manual setup for each little action that we want to perform. Now don't get me wrong, uh, IFTTT uh, can still be really useful for, for launching scenes and launching certain automations, uh, but in terms of just general hardware use, uh, you don't want to go make an IFTTT routine for each individual light in your house, and then once again for each individual light group and, and so on and so forth. So this is going to be a lot more uh, beneficial to us in terms of scale and in terms of ease of use. Uh, so let's get started. So this functionality has actually been around for a little while and it's uh, it's pretty closely tied to the Home Assistant Cloud platform, but uh, we're not going to be using Home Assistant Cloud. We're going to be doing this so that it ties directly to our uh, our web available instance of Home Assistant. I guess that's another thing I should, I should mention. Um, in order to make this work, your Home Assistant instance does have to be web available and I believe it also has to be web available, available via HTTPS. So um, I've said before in other videos, there's plenty of really good uh, YouTube videos about how to get uh, DuckDNS uh, set up and running for Home Assistant if uh, if you don't currently have a web available Home Assistant instance. And if you do currently have a web available Home Assistant instance, uh, then the only thing to make sure of is that you're using uh, HTTPS SSL certificates and uh, you should be good to go. So we're going to go down to the manual setup uh, section of this wiki page and we're going to skip past uh, this section here and we're going to go to first time setup. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the actions on Google console. And that is this guy here. So ignore uh, the uh, projects I have here. These are for, for unrelated things and for testing before I do this video. We're going to create a new project. And I'm going to call this project Home Assistant Integration. Create the project. And the type of project this is going to be, it's going to be a home control project. So click the home control card. And then we're going to select the smart home card. Okay, now we're going to go into the build your action page and we're going to say add an action. And we'll click add your first action. And this is where we're going to put our Home Assistant URL. So in my case, it's so the important part of this is is that you fill in your Home Assistant URL and port if uh, if that's necessary. It's not in my case. And then the endpoint you're looking for is slash API slash Google Assistant. And then we're going to click done. And now we'll go back to the overview screen. Okay, now that we're back at the overview screen, we want to set up account linking. And we'll say, no, I only want uh, to allow account creation on my website. We'll click next. The linking type, we're going to select uh, OAuth. And the grant type is going to be authorization code. Click next on that. And the client ID we're going to be using is https colon slash slash OAuth dash redirect dot Google user content dot com. So my browser filled this in for me because I've been to this page before. You're most likely going to have to uh, fill this in yourself. The client secret portion is really just going to be gibberish. Um, it's not something that gets used. So we'll move down to the authorization URL. And this is again going to be your Home Assistant web address. So wait. And then the endpoint is going to be slash auth slash authorize. Uh, the token URL is going to be the same. Uh, your again your Home Assistant 
uh, web address, but then the uh, endpoint will be slash r slash token. Okay, click next on that. Now we're going to define our scopes. So we're going to be adding two scopes. One's going to be email, and one will be name. So in this for in this uh, box, we'll just put email, and then name, and we're going to leave this unchecked, uh, and we're going to click next. And the testing instructions again can be anything because uh, we're not submitting. It. Okay. Click save to that. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to be clicking uh, the simulator box under the test heading. And we don't really have to do anything here. I usually just click start testing. Uh, what we really want to do is put the application in test mode. And I think just going to the simulator box does that. But if I click start testing, it's neither here nor there. So up to now, we've been following verbatim. Uh, the instructions on the uh, on the, the wiki page here for first time setup. Uh, before we move on, we're just going to go back up to the top and we're going to we're going to create an API key for the Google Home Graph API, and we're going to do that by clicking on the Google Cloud API console. So in this console, you can see we've got the Home Graph API uh, enabled. And before we click anything, uh, I just want to make sure that we're we have our uh, project that we just created up in the top bar. So the one I just created is Home Assistant Integration. And if it snaps you back to the search page, just uh, search for Home Graph API. And it'll bring you back to where you need to be. So if you have your project selected up here and the Home Graph API page uh, loaded, just click Enable. And we want to generate an API key. So we're going to go ahead and say create credentials. And we're going to click uh, the API link that is under this under heading number one, the API key link. And we'll name our API key. Obviously, I've got a couple of these from testing. So I'm just going to name mine API key three. And I will say create. OK, and your API key will pop up in a box in the middle. Yours won't be. Yours will be completely visible. I'm just like blurring or blanking mine out. So, you know, you can't use my API key. So close that box and copy and paste your key into a text document for use in just a second. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to configure our Google Assistant entry in the configuration.yaml file. And I'm going to put that right here below cloud. The first two headings that the Google Assistant entry asks for is the product ID and the API key. So the API key is going to be the one that we just generated. So let me uh, grab that. And the product ID is actually visible on the Actions on Google page. Uh, beside Overview, there's a gear. If you click that gear and click on Project Settings while your project is selected in the bar above, you can see the project ID is listed right here. So we're going to get that, grab that copy and paste it into this spot here. So you should have something that looks like that. Uh, the next section we're going to define the uh, domains that we're going to expose to uh, the Google Assistant and in my case that is going to be switch light cover group and scene so that Home Assistant can see my groups, my scenes, as well as my individual devices. One option that I like to use in my actual setup is this one here, and that's exposed by default, and that's set to false. And what this does is it allows us to add entities individually that will be exposed to the Google Assistant plugin instead of passing it every single individual entity that Home Assistant manages. And I find this useful because a majority of the time I'm interacting more with uh, smaller light groups and, uh, and other groups of devices rather than individual lights. I find it's more useful to, you know, I say, OK, Google, turn on the lights in the living room or turn on the home theater lights or yada, yada, yada. So that's just my own preference. If you want to expose your individual entities, um, it's certainly a lot easier to do that if you just exclude this line altogether or set exposed by default to true. Uh, if you use exposed by default false, you actually have to designate individual uh, entities that you want to uh, expose to Google Home. So I've got, I've got this in an example. So this is what it would look like uh, to add one entity 
at a time. So obviously it's going to be a lot more uh, work if you want to add and entities individually like this using by exposed by default false. Um, so for this example, I'm actually just going to set exposed by default to true, but I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that that was an option. Okay. So this is a good uh, starting point for the Google assistant um, configuration. Now there's a lot more you can do with this and it's all very, very well documented in the wiki page for Google assistant. Um, so definitely check that out. So the next thing we need to do is actually bounce our home assistant instance. And that's just to make sure it picks up the new configuration. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move to our mobile device and configure the Google home app. So go ahead and click on Google home and go to account and then settings. Then under the assistant heading, we're going to be going to home control and we're going to add a device. And in the add new section, you will see, I've got two here because I've configured this twice for the example, but you'll see one new application called test, my test app. And you're gonna go ahead and add that. And it'll ask you to log in with your home assistant credentials. And then it'll link your account into the Google Home app. And there we go. So now we can see that Home Assistant is exposing all of these entities uh, to Google Home. Um, and the next step would be to you know, open these and these individually, uh, assign them to a room, uh, maybe change their friendly name or, or, uh, or whatever else you do with your, you know, your Google Home devices usually. So the only other thing I wanted to add to this is if you make changes to devices in Home Assistant or add devices in Home Assistant, you can keep the Google Assistant up to date by saying, okay, Google, sync my devices. And this will actually do the, the sync with Home Assistant in real time without requiring you to unlink and relink your accounts. And it's a lot more convenient than a lot of even the professional cloud services can offer. So keep that in mind. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover with this video. Uh, if you feel like there's anything that's missing from here or if I glossed over some steps that you'd like more detail on, shoot me a comment, shoot me a PM, whatever it takes. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, bye-bye.